This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Jennifer Kaufman, after joining us, retired FBI special agent. She's going to be joining us uh, every day this week around this time. We're going to be talking uh, deep into the Brian Koberger case, digging in to the arraignment that took place on Monday, the events that happened there, what happened with the grand jury uh, convening prior to that, where this is all going from here, where is his family standing in all this? Lots of questions to be answered. So press subscribe so you don't miss any of this uh, extended conversation that we're going to be having throughout the week with Jennifer Coffin Daffer. Jennifer, welcome. Uh, and thank you again for being on. Always appreciate having you here. I want to talk about the grand jury convening. I guess the question is, why now? Is this a long time to wait for a grand jury to convene? Why didn't they do this a little bit sooner instead of waiting right up until the month before the preliminary hearing? Uh, let's start with that. Why now? Why did it take them so long to convene a grand jury? Or maybe it wasn't that long in terms of things like this. Uh, as opposed to going forward what they planned for for June 26 with that preliminary hearing? Well, the grand jury was a big win for the prosecution from a strategic standpoint. It, it was also a actually a no-brainer. Uh, there is no positive, uh, anything positive about a preliminary hearing because everything that's at a preliminary hearing, the prosecution can do at a grand jury, yet it is secretive. Now, Saying that, a lot of people think, well, it's unfair because the defense isn't there to cross-examine, but they forget that there's 16, in this case, grand jurors there. And they ask, having been in these and presented these cases for all these years, they have the best questions, just like your audience. You know, <laughs> they evaluate, they look, and they scrutinize the evidence. So this isn't just to sit down and and you know, you get to tell everybody and and they vote uh, unanimously. No, they look closely. Also, Tony, I think this has been going on for weeks. Yeah. We just haven't known about it. And the defense didn't know about it. This was secret. Let me ask you about the actual proceedings themselves, because we use the term all the time, grand jury. It happens all the time. But very few of us have ever been privy to see what actually goes on in a grand jury uh, hearing. What what obviously there's there's no defense there that can stand up and do their part. But w is there a big difference between the prosecution laying out a case in a regular hearing or a regular trial in a grand jury setting? Or is there a difference in terms of procedure and how things work? There's different. There's a difference. Let me let me lay the scene. So uh, there's a chair for the witness. Uh, there's a table for the prosecution. There's a court reporter and there's a a clerk. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's the, the setup. Then you have your grand jurors, and these grand jurors have to come typically once a week, and they listen for several hours to the, if not the whole day. Uh, everyone is different. They're all scheduled differently, and they are knitting. Uh, they have their articles they're reading. Uh, they are doing what they would normally do. Uh, there's a lot of breaks. It's very casual. Mm -hmm. um, there's a four person that uh, really runs uh, the grand jurors and they are in charge. Uh, when a witness comes in, they're sworn in and they begin um, presenting the evidence. And again, it's all open to any grand juror mm -hmm. asking any question they want regarding that evidence. So during and the process. Isn't that interesting? It's yeah. so interesting. So like during the actual presentation of evidence, they're able to what, like raise their hand and say, I want to ask about this, or do they have to wait till they go to deliberation for that? Oh, no. Right when you're presenting the evidence, they oh, can wow. ask a question. How interesting. And, and sometimes they'll even interrupt. Yeah. You know, you'll be explaining, and then they'll say, but, but wait, what about this? Um, so they're very inquisitive. It's really no difference than a jury of your peers. Like I said, mm -hmm. your audience. Yeah. Um, that's really inquiring about everything. So in a sense, they are the defense. They're asking the questions that a defendant or a defense team might ask. So in terms of a case like this, and obviously we do not know the details of everything that happened in, in that grand jury hearing, uh, but what do you expect that they laid out? Obviously, the things that we know already, 
but are they likely also privy to a lot of other pieces of evidence that are being held back at this moment with the gag order yes. and just for trial? I think so, Tony. They would have seen uh, the layout of the evidence from the probable cause affidavit. So I believe, though, that they would have even inserted more facts to substantiate each of the points. Remember that probable cause affidavit, which is amazing considering everything law enforcement was doing there, Mm -hmm. tracking Koberger, you know, having him under surveillance uh, to keep the community safe as much as anything else, because the police, again, believes he has committed these crimes. Mm -hmm. Then you have a team that's just pouring through the evidence and writing this really quite unusual probable cause affidavit. Um, Normally, they're about two or three pages long. It's really probable cause is a very, very low standard. And this probable cause affidavit is long. So that's what they would have heard, supplemented, as you said, uh, by much more information and facts that they have now. Was it unusual that the defense of Koberger is requesting uh, the transcripts and every piece of information that took place in that grand jury hearing into discovery? It is not unusual, I don't believe, for Idaho. In looking at the law, certainly the prosecutor is going to have to turn over the transcripts. Uh, It's going to be ordered by the judge, I believe, although you see a motion was done. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for the judge to make this order. Uh, It's a huge amount of information the defense is seeking, Mm -hmm. not just the transcripts. So we'll see if they get everything they ask for or just partially the judge is going to have to make that call. Wouldn't they be getting all that information in discovery regardless of of getting the the transcript of the grand jury hearing? Wouldn't it all be part of uh, what discovery has to be turned over? Really, yes, uh, is the answer. Mm -hmm. But recall that every time you interview a witness, there's certain changes. Mm -hmm. You know, they describe things differently. Um, You can't, as a human, exactly say the same thing every time unless you're reading from a script. Mm -hmm. So that's what the defense will be looking for, are minor differences or changes or additions to what they're seeing from the interviews of those witnesses. Essentially, they want, uh, like, if all of these people, all of the, the witnesses, all of the evidence, that's ingredients they want the recipe. They want, they want them to the finish product. They want the, the baked cake. Once they know how this is applied, how it's going to be used by the defense, they want to see that, not just the list of ingredients. Basically. I, I actually love that, Tony. I might steal that. Go for it. They do want the <laughs> recipe. Okay. They, they, they don't want the garden and you know, the grocery store. Yeah. Right. That's the grocery store right now. 51 terabytes of information. Mm -hmm. They want to see it all boiled down to what the prosecution's case is going to be. Remember, though, the prosecution knew this would likely happen, you know, that they would be uh, forced to turn over these transcripts. So uh, they're going to limit it. I hope they did it anyway, to truly probable cause. This is not a finding of innocence or guilt. A grand jury isn't used for that. Mm -hmm. So It's a huge distinction. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Jennifer Coffendapper, retired FBI special agent. Thank you so much for being on and giving us your insight into that portion of the Brian Koberger case. There's so many more things to discuss about this. We're going to dive into talking about, uh, well, there was no family at the arraignment the other day. What's going on there? Uh, as well as many other aspects of this case uh, as it continues to develop and we get ready for a trial, possibly in October. Jennifer has some thoughts on that as well. Press subscribe wherever you download podcasts so you don't miss any breaking updates or discussions as we have them for you right here. My name is Tony Bruski. Stay with us.